we switched the the um, the body around a little bit. So this is the thoracic spine, and I marked out the disc spaces in the vertebral bodies. So this is the iliac crest on the bottom, and then this is the top, and this is anterior, and this is posterior. So we're going to try to go and do a lateral um, thoracic approach, and I'm going to try to show you guys how to go retroplural and stay out of the chest cavity. Okay, so he's going to do a very elegant axis, and if you make a hole in the pleura, you're going to be in trouble because Dr. Smith and Dr. Taylor will tell you that you're not making us show up good. So you must better stay retroplural, my friend. I'm going to do my best. You know, it's always hard to follow Dr. Smith. He's such a great surgeon. He does such a great job with you. So what level are you accessing right now? So works. I think this is about uh, T7 to T9. And we marked the disc spaces um, just so you guys can see. And I think one important point, and Dr. Smith kind of talked about this, is you know, using fluoro really to, you know, before, it, I remember when we first started doing this, we I try to count the rib, then find the rib, then go between the ribs, and, and it was just, you know, I probably shot a hundred different fluoro shots. Now, we get a nice AP and lateral, and I literally just mark where the pathology is, and then whatever rib this is, we're going to take that out so that when you put your retractor in, you've got a nice area that you can retract open and trying to go in between them like we used to do, you end up fracturing both ribs and it's more painful than just taking a rib out. So we're going to go ahead and try to access, I think this is T8, T9 right yeah, here. And on, the, and on the clinical world, this is the perfect approach for a thoracic herniated disc. This is like the best highlight, you know. Or metastatic lesions, for example, you can leave the pleura intact and you will leave them to dropping cells into the chest. If you keep that barrier that is the pleura intact, it's a really good setup as well. So we're just making a lateral incision. And you can see, let's get a little retractor. So we're going to go ahead and go through the muscles, and we're going to get that right down on the rib. And do you make the incision along the rib space, or do you make it parallel, or how do you how do you make your incision right along the rib you're taking out, or just up straight across? You know that's a great question, Bill. I used to try to make it right over the rib, and uh, try to you know follow the rib down. Now I just whatever rib so like for example you can see hopefully you can see that there there's a rib that's coming across right here and so we're going to go ahead and take that rib out and that's the rib that we'll we'll use and we'll follow the rib and go anterior and as you know from the anatomy the rib head will take you to the transverse process and that'll take you to the neural frame and so it'll take you posteriorly and that's kind of you can, you can see it there, hopefully on the image. Um, let's see the suction. So there's the rib right there. And then what we'll do, can I get a pen field? Can I have a pen field on there? Is now that we have the, there's the rib. And normally what I do is I just basically find the rib and then just nicely retr retract all the muscles around it and dissect, so you have the intercostal nerve and artery, and so we carefully dissect all this off. And as Juan pointed out, you know, you really wanna try to stay out of the chest, and so in a cadaver, sometimes it's, it's pretty stuck, so, and it's very thin. So you can see here, here's the rib, and then you start to see a shiny, structure right there and so you start to see the pleura. So what we're going to do is just carefully and, and I think you know if I during this approach I would spend a little extra time dissecting both above and below the rib and that'll save you a lot of time when you put your tractor in. I don't know, um, 
Juan or Bill how you guys do it, but I really, I like taking the rib and just cutting it both proximal and distal. That way you've got a good area that you can carefully retract and not have to worry about fracturing the ribs. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree the same thing. I take the rib, I usually try to work more proximally on the rib because once you cut it, the distal portion floats a little bit more freely. So I work um, along to the posterior aspect of the rib uh, and that's the one that always seems to kind of stick in the incision. So towards towards the vertebral body or towards the rib head, I always make an effort to go farther in that direction. Um, and are these the instruments you use or do you use uh, thoracic instruments when you're doing the rib dissection? You know, normally we use the thoracic instruments. So we've got a doyen in here and we try to get Again, just even you can it's amazing how much exposure you can get just through and a tiny little lateral incision. You can see how much of the rib we have exposed. And then do we have some kerosens? And I typically again try to really undermine everything, so try to get as as much of the rib as possible because it's just gonna get in the way when you put your retractor in. And you can start to see the pleura right there, hopefully just right underneath my instrument. And then we're gonna go ahead, and typically what I'll do is essentially do an osteotomy across the rib and just come all the way across it. and. You can see I've undermined a lot of the tissue underneath there. And again, in a cadaver, it's, it's a little tricky because you can have the pleura. It's so thin, it's, it's, uh, it's easy to get into. Yeah, if you don't, the other instruments you can ask for in the set is the Alexander, right? Which is a, a doyen and Alexander. The Alexander yep. is the periosteal and it separates out with on the other side. And then they have a rib cutter too, which works really well, all the thoracic things. Uh -huh. I like using the kerosene uh, on the cadavers because it's so easy to get into the pleura. And I know Juan is just waiting there to right, get I'll into the chest cavity there. Do you want to attach a craniotomy attachment? Because it gets you this nice, smooth cut. Yeah. And a lot of times I will plate these back on thin patients, women especially, for cosmetic reasons. For trauma from taking the rib out, I'll do it, put it through, plate it back so you don't get a flailed chest so they have a couple other rib fractures from trauma. So we're almost all the way across the rib, and then B1. Yeah, go ahead. Have a question. What about um, the squaring the ribs without system of the thoracic? Well, I, I mean, Rod can answer that again, but I I have exactly the same experience that he had. The first time I did a case, I broke two ribs, and that patient didn't like me at all. And so every time now I take out a rib, I find it, it takes five minutes, I find it easier, better access, better to fit definition of the anatomy. Um, so I take a rib every time. Can you split and go between? Absolutely, there's no question you can divide them. The farther you go up in the chest, the harder it is because they get closer together, they get more stiff. The lower down you are, the easier it is. We're gonna say the way you can get rib okay. insert, if you take So actually this is a great, hopefully you guys can see this. Um, this is a great anatomical dissection. So you can see the, so there's the pleura, and you can see. Bill, Bill Smith wants to know what that big black thing is in the middle. You know, that was, uh, I think one snuck in here and poked a hole in it. I swear I didn't do well, that. You know, Juan is actually not in the room. He might have done that. He is pretty <laughs> sneaky. So. So here's the rib, and you can see again, um, that was the kind of the orientation, and you can see how much of, um, how much access you have now when you take the rib out. And we'll use that for bone graft. And you can see, I mean, look how, so there's the nerve, the artery and the vein all in one. So there's your, and you can see there's the pleura. And you can see how easy it is to get into it. And typically, 
Again, I just kind of bluntly, I put my finger usually underneath the rib, and you can follow the rib both, so there's going to be the rib pr above you that you didn't take and the rib below you that you did take. And typically what we'll do is we'll just put our finger, and there's a little plane you can develop, and you can just go extra plural, and you go all the way down, and you kind of develop this plane and it takes you all the way down in the spine. And I think for me the, the finger technique works the best and you can kind of hopefully see that. And I'm going to just develop that plane and again in a cadaver it's a little bit more challenging. And that's really it, and I know we're kind of running behind, so I just wanted to show you guys, I think this is the most important part of the approach, and, and you can see that there, you can see there's a little hole, and you can see that I'm, this area is kind of stuck, so normally what we would do is just develop that plane and go all the way down, and as we talk, and I think both Dr. Taylor and um, Dr. Smith are going to talk a little bit about you know, how do you manage, let's say, you know, you've got both a pleural tear and a visceral tear, you know, what are the, what are the potential complications? But that's essentially it. And then, you know, you've got, depending on what company you use, all the retractors, you know, each company's got a great set of instruments and retractors, and you can literally just go right down on the spine after you've taken the rib head off and done your extra pleural dissection.